Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Alexander Trepelkov, and I am officer in charge of the United Nations Forum on Forests Secretariat at the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs. As such, I am very pleased to welcome you to this special virtual event to celebrate the 2021 International Day of Forests. You will recall that in 2012, the United Nations General Assembly proclaimed the 21st of March of each year, the International Day of Forests, to raise the awareness of the importance of all types of forests and of trees outside forests for sustainable development. The General Assembly further requested our Secretariat to facilitate the implementation of the International Day in collaboration with our partners in the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Accordingly, every year since then, we have held a special event to celebrate the International Day at United Nations headquarters in New York with the participation of representatives of member states, intergovernmental organizations, regional organizations, members of the collaborative partnerships on forests and stakeholder groups. The International Day provides an opportunity to highlight the multifaceted nature of forests and how they support us in every aspect of our lives. This year's celebration focuses on the theme forest restoration a path to recovery and well-being. This theme, theme is particularly relevant as we face the COVID-19 pandemic and build the foundation for a sustainable recovery for all. Throughout today's event, we will hear from speakers and presenters from governments, the UN system, the private sector, non-governmental organizations, and children who will share their perspectives on how restoring the health of our forests and sustainably managing them is crucial to support livelihoods, mitigate climate change, safeguard biodiversity, and build resilience. For the first part of our event, we are privileged to have with us five distinguished speakers from key United Nations institutions and intergovernmental bodies dealing with forests and sustainable development, who will share their views on why and how forests are a path to a sustainable future for all. The first speaker on the list is Mr. Liu Zhenmin, Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, at the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. I am pleased to invite the Under Secretary to deliver the opening address to today's event. Mr. Liu, you have the floor now. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, each year on March 21st, the global community comes together to acclaim the importance of forests in our everyday lives. Last year, many of the sea events for the International Day of Forests could not take place with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. This year, virtual platforms are enabling us to gather and observe the important day. Forests provide so much to so many. They provide income and livelihoods for rural populations, particularly for indigenous peoples and other forest-dependent communities. During this pandemic, the forestry sector has provided essential health products from face masks to cleaning supplies to ethanol for sanitizers. In these times of social distancing, green spaces urban parks and the forests have been vital for the health and wellness of communities. Furthermore, 
healthy and well-managed forests serve as a natural buffer against the transmission of zoonosis, thus reducing the risk of future pandemics. Yet, despite their obvious importance, forests continue to be under threat. Every year, 7 million hectares of natural forests are converted to other land uses, such as large-scale commercial agriculture and other economic activities. And while the rate of deforestation has slowed over the past decade, tree cover losses have continued, unabated in the tropics, largely due to the human and the natural causes. As a natural ecosystem, forests continue to be impacted by environmental degradation, fragmentation, and unsustainable land use patterns. They are vulnerable to invasive pests, diseases, and fires, many of which are expected to only get worse due to climate change. So if we want the forest to continue to provide us with a multifaceted services and products in the future, we have to take steps to safeguard them now. We have our global framework for sustainable forest management in the United Nations Strategic Plan for Forest 2030. This is aligned with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change through its global forest goals and associated targets. Strategic plan underscores that urgent action is needed to reverse forest loss, increase the world's forest area by 3%, and eradicate extreme poverty for forest dependent people. It also offers a nature friendly solution to many of our most pressing challenges, such as competing climate change and biodiversity loss and it provides an essential component in COVID-19 green recovery and economic stimulus packages. Dear colleagues, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a harsh wake-up call. We have seen many hard-earned development gains reverse and systemic inequalities worsen. At the same time, we have a unique opportunity to take concerted action to recover better and stronger, rethink and re-engineer our economies, and adopt more sustainable and green solutions. In this decade of action to deliver SDGs by 2030, and as we begin the new decade on ecosystem restoration, let us use this International Day of Force to send a strong message. Let us restore and protect our forests, our planet, and all its vital ecosystems for generations to come. I thank you. The Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs for his opening statement. It is now my privilege to invite the President of the 75th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, His Excellency Mr. Volkan Boskir, to address the meeting. Excellency, you have the floor. What do you think of when you hear the word reforestation? For some, it is about rebuilding lost or at-risk ecosystems and reclaiming a space for biodiversity to thrive. For others, it is about clean air and expanding the so-called lungs of the earth, allowing our trees to absorb carbon dioxide into the soil and reduce the potential for climate change. And yet for others, it is about jobs and livelihoods, whether through mass tree planting or through sustainable forestry or related industries. The truth is that reforestation is all these things and more. 
through projects such as the African-led Great Green Wall, which aims to bridge the expanse of Africa's Sahel with trees. We are absorbing carbon, providing livelihoods, and protecting biodiversity all at once. As the world begins, the slow climb of the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19, it is my hope that reforestation and projects can be seen as areas of investment, offering jobs and livelihoods at a time when they are needed most, all while protecting against future crises. As president of the UN, UN General Assembly, I look forward to galvanizing action on land issues and reforestation at the high-level dialogue on desertification, land degradation, and drought in May. And I look forward to speaking at the 16th UN Forum on Forests next month. By acting together, we can bring life back to our forests. I thank the President of the General Assembly for his important statement and for taking the time to join us this morning. Now it is my honor to invite the President of the United Nations Economic and Social Council, His Excellency Mr. Munir Akram, Permanent Representative of Pakistan to the United Nations, to address the meeting. Excellency, you have the floor. Excellencies, distinguished delegates and participants, it is my pleasure to join you to celebrate the 2021 International Day of Forests. The establishment 20 years ago of the UN Forum on Forests was a momentous development. The adoption of the first United Nations Strategic Plan for Forests 2030 was another landmark moment. Today, even as we grapple with the COVID pandemic, global forest goals outlined in the plan are even more vital to ensure that recovery from the crisis does not exacerbate the loss of biodiversity and natural ecosystems and jeopardize the implementation of the Paris Agreement on climate change. Excellency, the world's forests are fast retreating. As the COVID crisis takes its toll on the most vulnerable segments of our societies, and incomes and livelihoods decline, the dependence of millions, especially in the rural communities, on forests and forest products like fuel wood will continue to grow. We must take urgent action to stop deforestation and forest degradation and provide alternatives to rural populations dependent on wood burning through renewable energy installation and job creation in the rural areas. Simultaneously, we must prioritize restoring forests through long-term reforestation plans. Degraded land can be made productive again. The benefits of restoring forest landscapes offer direct long-term benefits for local communities. My country, Pakistan, has embarked on an ecosystem restoration plan through its national agencies. Pakistan's Prime Minister, Mr. Imran Khan, has launched a campaign to plant 10 billion trees over the next three years. This will also create employment and job opportunities for unskilled labor, especially women, and provide fruit and other income-enhancing products. This is a critical component of Pakistan's COVID response and recovery plan. Excellencies, dear participants, we need to stop thinking in silence. Actions towards reforestation and climate adaptation should be incorporated into national poverty alleviation programs. The United Nations 
can help member states to plan and initiate such actions, especially by utilizing the resident coordinators and the UNDP resident representatives in over 130 developing countries to develop integrated and holistic reforestation plans. The potential of science, technology, and innovation must be mobilized for this purpose also. Technologies such as remote sensing, efficient water management techniques, and the GIS technology for data collection can be powerful tools in reforestation and climate adaptation. Drone technologies are being used to survey and map forests and even to plant trees in remote, inaccessible areas. To make all this possible, finance is the key. Governments should be encouraged to invest in reforestation and other nature-based solutions. Forest restoration offers a cheap and efficient way for local communities to build their natural capital, improve their environment, and ultimately support people's livelihoods and their being. There is, of course, no one-size-fits-all solution. But we will need to address the debt and liquidity crisis that currently severely restricts the capacity of most developing countries to attract money for reforestation and nature-based solutions. One option is debt swaps for nature. The issuance of green bonds is another approach. Finally, it is worth propagating the message that financing forest preservation and restoration presents a huge opportunity. Forests offer one of the most cost-effective means for tackling climate change as carbon sinks and as means to regulate rainfall, absorb pollutants, safeguard watersheds, and prevent the spread of zoonotic diseases such as COVID-19. The theme of this year's International Day of Forests captures this sentiment. Forest restoration is a path to recovery for people everywhere and for the future health and preservation of our planet. It is up to all of us to mobilize the political will to transform our vision and goals into reality. I thank you. I thank the president of the Economic and Social Council for his statement and for being here with us today. Now it is my pleasure to invite the chair of the 16th and 17th sessions of the United Nations Forum on Forests, Her Excellency, Ms. Kitty Sweep, permanent representative of the Republic of Suriname to the United Nations to address the meeting. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Trepokov. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. As chair of the United Nations Forum on Forest, it is a pleasure to join today's celebration of the International Day of Forest. The day provides a platform for the forest community to address a global audience and highlight how forests are an integral part of our daily lives and our well being. 2020 was a watershed moment in human history as countries around the world battled the global COVID-19 pandemic. As millions of the rural poor faced increased economic vulnerability and food insecurity, the role of forests as a provider of basic sub subsistence needs became all the more important. In urban areas, local parks and nearby forests gave us a much needed social distancing appropriate refuge. Spending time in forests and around trees provided us a range of health benefits from boosting immune systems to lowering blood pressure and reducing stress all over. The global COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated development challenges and created difficult choices being made between safeguarding health systems and sustaining economies. And through it all, the most vulnerable segments of our society faced the brunt of these choices. Declines in international tourism, disruption in global supply chains, and contraction of foreign direct investment flows and remittances 
had a crippling impact on the economies of developing countries. To help the forest community gorge the impact of the pandemic on sustainable forest management, last year, the 15th session of the UN Forum on Forest requested the UNFF Secretariat to conduct an initial assessment in this regard. The scope of this initial assessment covered COVID-19 impacts on the forest sector, forest dependent people, indigenous people and local communities, forest financing and international cooperation. While the findings of this assessment will be presented at the forum's upcoming 16th session next month, it is self-evident that healthy and well-managed forests can help to offset many of the negative social, economic, and environmental impacts of the pandemic. Forests and the ecosystem services they provide are essential for building resilience and as safety nets for vulnerable communities. The sustainable management of forests is interconnected with our shared aspiration for economic growth, biodiversity conservation, and combating climate change. The global forest goals and targets of the UN Strategic Plan for Forest 2030 recognize this interrelationship as they were crafted to support progress on the sustainable development goals, the post-2020 biodiversity framework, and the Paris Agreement through forest-based actions. And this brings me back to the theme of this year's International Day of Forests. 2021 has been referred to as the year of recovery. So it is particularly timely that we focus on how restoring forests can help us to recover from the current crisis and strengthen our resilience against future threats. Globally, forests cover 31% of all land area on earth. One quarter of these forests are found in a group of countries called the High Forest Cover Low Deforestation Countries, HFLD for short. I happen to come from one such forest rich country, Suriname, where 93% of our land area is covered by forest. Suriname's forests are of global importance as a biodiversity hotspot and a carbon sink. But like many HFLD countries, developing countries specifically, our high forest cover is under immediate threat from economic growth and development. We are also particularly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change and have been experiencing extensive coastal erosion and damage from heavy rainfall, flooding, higher temperatures during dry seasons and high winds. Forests offer us innumerable benefits, but to stay healthy, they have to be sustainably managed, and this takes resources. If we want to get back on track to realize a vision for a more sustainable, healthy, equitable world, we must acknowledge that we cannot have a one-sided relationship with our natural environment, one that is focused on just taking and not giving back. On this International Day of Forest, I hope that you will join me in sending a clear and strong message that we need to invest in the world's forests. We need to acknowledge the true value of these precious ecosystems in our health and well being, and the sustainable the future of our planet. Only then can we ensure that we are on a path to green recovery. I thank you. I thank the chair of the United Nations Forum on Forests for her statement and for taking the time to uh, joining us live this morning. It is now my privilege to invite the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, Mr. Q Donghui, to address the meeting. Sir, you have the floor. On International Day of Forests, we shine a light on restoring our forests as a path to recovery and well-being in a time of unprecedented climate, health, and economic crisis. Forests offer hope to heal people, environment, and the economy. Healthy forests make a valuable contribution to our life. They provide fresh air, nutritious food, clean water, and space for spiritual and physical recreation. There are also green pharmacies offering us plant-based medicines, and the forests provide about 86 million jobs globally. Yet, deforestation and forest degradation 
continue to have a damaging impact on our environment. By increasing soil erosion, threatening water quality, release a large amount of the climate warming gases and causing destructive losses to biodiversity. Fortunately, the solutions are now and within our reach, science and innovation, big data and the digital technologies are the tools we need. Restoring forests and managing them more sustainably is a cost effective option to provide the benefits to people and planet. Investments, in forest restoration also contributed to economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Forest restoration activities created green jobs, generated incomes, improved human health, and increased food security. In this first year of the UN decade on ecosystem restoration, we need to take every opportunity to build back better and greener. Let's join hands, restore the planet for better production, by the nutrition, and by the environment, and by the life. Thank you. I thank the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations for his statement and for being with us this morning. I now turn the meeting over to my colleague, Mr. Hussein Moeni Meiboudi, Senior Foreign Affairs Officer at the United Nations Forum on Forest Secretariat. He will moderate, moderate the second part of this meeting. Mr. Moeni Meibodi, you have the floor now. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Trepelkov. Excellencies, uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm pleased to moderate this part of the meeting during which we will hear messages from a number of speakers on the importance of managing and restoring our forests. We will first begin with a short video featuring the state forester from Montana Department of Natural Resources and Conservation of the United States, Sonia German. Ms. German has worked with the Montana Department of Natural Resources and Conservation for 14 years and is currently the Montana State Forester where she works with communities and private landowners to promote sustainable forests and watersheds for the benefits of all Montanans. Please play the video. have always been actively engaged with their ecosystems and especially their forests, especially here in Montana. Whether or not you live within the wildland or urban interface, in the middle of the woods or in our communities, forests affect us all. They affect our drinking water supplies, they affect our air quality, they affect all of our recreational pursuits, and they affect all of our economies in one way or another. I am Sonia German. I'm the state forester for the state of Montana. I oversee private forestry assistance, all of our partnerships with our state, federal, local partners and tribal nations. And I oversee wildfire protection on state and private lands. As state foresters, we really see active forest management as being the tool to achieve all of the values that we hold dear for recreation, clean watersheds, protecting our communities and supporting wildlife habitat. We're really proud of the work that our service foresters do with private forest landowners. So say that you have a landowner that is really concerned about wildfire or really concerned about the insect and disease that they might be seeing on their land. A service forester will go and, and essentially consult with that private forest landowner and come up with a plan to address some of those predominant issues that they're seeing on their private forest land. My name is Mary Ann Garner. My name is Don Garner. And we're here at the, the Bear Paw, we call it. 10 miles from Big Fork, Montana. We purchased this property with the intent of having it be grizzly bear habitat. We knew nothing about managing a forest. I took a class on forest stewardship that was sponsored by the DNRC. They teach you how to inventory your property, how to evaluate it. And the thing that I came away with is that we have a very sick forest and it needed a lot of help. Probably the biggest threat right now for this property is wildfire. When we got the property, it had been logged in the past and hadn't been logged with much care. 
And there were a lot of places with extremely dense stands of pretty unhealthy trees that are, would be just ready with the smallest torch to go. We are seeing larger fires and we're also seeing more fires. We end up working with a lot of private forested landowners to do a lot of thinning, help educate them about the natural occurrence of fire, help them understand that there is a likelihood that fire may occur within or around their, their forested ownership. The contractor comes in, does extensive thinning, cuts down trees, mm -hmm. stacks the slash, puts the logs on a, a truck and takes them to the mill. The way that helps with the fire risk is to reduce the opportunity for fires to go from the ground up into the trees. You know, take the ladder fuel out and just increase the spacing from tree to tree. And the cost of that is shared between us and the, the Montana DNRC. The cost sharing programs were invaluable for getting us to do things on scale where we could do more acres instead of like four acres, we could do 20 acres. And um, backing those up over a number of years, we've been able to cover most of the property, get thinning done on most of it. There are over 800 million acres of forested land throughout the United States. And that's a lot of forested acres. And that's a lot of ownerships, wildland fire, um, insect disease, smoke. They don't recognize jurisdictional boundaries or ownership boundaries. And we have a saying that neither should our management. In 2008 Farm Bill, Congress required of the states to put together what are called forest action plans. And they wanted us to do three things, assess the conditions of all forested lands, work with a collaborative group to identify priority areas to address some of the predominant issues that we are seeing, and come up with implementation strategies as to how we're gonna get that work done. The need for our services is growing, whether it's local government, state government, federal partners, tribal nations, or private landowners. The power of forest action plans is they offer that opportunity for us to work across those jurisdictional boundaries. And state foresters, we're the glue that brings everybody together. Thank you very much. We will now hear from the chair of the Global Partnership on Forest and Landscape Restoration, Musanda Mumba. Dr. Mumba has extensive experience in global environmental and conservation issues and is currently the director for the Rome Center for Sustainable Development under UNDP and is also the founder of the network of African women environmentalists. Ms. Sanda, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much, Hussein. It was such a pleasure to really be invited to speak um, at this event. And thank you so very much to the organizers. And I was really honored to just listen in to the previous session, but also more importantly, I think, to watch that video from the United States, because not so long ago, whilst we were you know, seeing all the dynamics and the lockdowns of the pandemic, we're also seeing fires across California. And it's really good to see that collective action that's happening. And really from us, uh, the Global Partnership on Forest and Landscape Restoration, the constituency is all about collective action. And forest landscape restoration is so key in this restoration agenda. For me, I'm streaming in from Nairobi, and I'm very fortunate to really live very close to Karura Forest, Africa's largest inner city forest, one that was managed and saved by the one Nobel Peace Prize winner, Wangari Mathai. And so how do we share these experiences? Because a lot of us are actually living in cities. I was also great to, you know, it was great to listen in to Ambassador Shrib when she talked about the importance of actually the recovery, our health systems, and also finding a moment to go in nature. Because this, con this pandemic has shown how all the elements of sustainability have been affected. And also more importantly, how do we amplify this and make sure that action is real on the ground as we go on this path to recovery? And what does recovery actually look like? I think that is a very important and critical question. And really from the GPFLR constituency, we have worked very critically with a lot of scientists, experts, policymakers 
to really unpack a lot of these principles around forest and landscape restoration. And this is something that we're bringing to the agenda of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. I was very fortunate um, when I was at UN Environment to have been part of that team, the collective team that really worked very hard to make sure that this decade comes into action. And we very much look forward to the launch in June on the World Environment Day. So I just want to stop here and, and really challenge everyone in our very different roles and our very different capabilities and capacities to encourage everyone within our communities. And I was so glad to see um, the DG of FAO talk about the importance of these systems as phytopharmacies for many Africans who cannot even go to a hospital. The forest is the first point of call and nature is the first point of call for medicines. And for many parts of the world, that is the case for indigenous peoples, for traditional peoples. So I just want to say thank you so much. And I really hope that as we work collectively in this restoration agenda, we be the change that we want to see. And I look forward to the deliberations and listening in on the conversations. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Masunda, for your remarks and thoughtful uh, uh, points you shared with us. At this stage, uh, we will hear a recorded message by the director of the Center for Environmental Research and Education in India, Rashne Pardiwala. Dr. Pardiwala is an ecologist by training. She established the Center for Environmental Research and Education a Mumbai-based not-for-profit organization in 2002 to promote environmental sustainability through formal education, corporate partnerships, public awareness campaigns, and legal advocacy. Uh, please play the video. Thank you. When I first entered Dungarwadi, the forest was under a lot of stress and rather degraded, being situated in one of the most polluted cities of the world. I started with one small corner plot of five acres of land by first removing the additional termite load, reintroducing large native tree saplings, introducing a good watering system. And slowly over the past five years, I've seen the forest revived. I've seen it rejuvenate itself. The forest is alive. It's vibrant. And I think this is possible only because the communities came together as a whole. 
the Bombay Parsi Panchayat were very supportive of my initiative. Individual Parsis donated towards this project. And today, the forest serves as an example of how a community can come together to start greening our concrete jungles. I truly believe that nature has an amazing ability to bounce back. If we only gave it that one opportunity. I think communities need to come together to start greening their concrete jungles, to start reviving forests. Biodiversity is required for our survival. Thank you very much. It's really encouraging to see all these activities by people and for people around the world, by governments and non-governmental actors. Uh, we will now hear a recorded message by the executive director of IBA, the Brazilian tree industry, Mr. Jose Carlos da Fonseca. As the executive director, he is responsible for institutional and public affairs at the local and global level. He is also IBA's representative at the International Council of Forest and Paper Association and the FAO's Advisory Committee on Sustainable Forest Based Industry. Please play the video. March 21st, International Day of Forest, is a landmark. The Brazilian tree industry, IBA, knows well the importance of natural forests in those planted ones for commercial and industrial purposes, and the value of both in the ongoing search for sustainability. In Brazil, the forest sector plants an area of 9 million hectares, less than 1% of the country's territory. Another 6 million hectares are set aside for conservation. In other words, the private sector preserves an area the size of Denmark. Approximately 38% of mammals and 41% of birds that are endangered in Brazil have been found to be present in these areas, proving that sustainable management provides a refuge and sustainability for biodiversity. The world is committed to accelerating the recovery of degraded ecosystems by creating efficient measures to combat the crisis related to climate, food, water, and the loss of biodiversity. For years, the planted forest sector has had programs to restore degraded areas. In 2018, it covered over 21,000 hectares. In 2019, this area grew to above 32,000 hectares. Even though forest restoration is a major challenge, companies invest in research and technology to make the process more efficient and to restore biodiversity, water resources, pollinators, and other ecosystem services. Our sector in Brazil did not stop during the pandemic. It kept running to provide products that are essential in our everyday lives, such as protective equipment, surgical masks, and paper packaging, as well as packages for delivery and e-commerce, hygiene items like tissues, paper towels, and toilet paper, and even diapers. The industry has also donated hospital equipment, protective equipment for health professionals, hygiene items, food stuff, and the products of our manufacturers. The planted forest sector is engaging, renewable, and sustainable, and can be a driving force for a green recovery of our economy. We need to abandon and evolve from the old economy and pursue policies that help achieve the goals and in international agreements that we all commit to and to develop a sustainable future in low carbon economy. Raising awareness about the International Day of Forest is one important step towards establishing a sustainable existence on our planet.
Thank you very much. We will now hear a recorded message from the Morton Freshman Center of J. Sterling Morton High School District 201 in Cicerco, Illinois, located just outside of Chicago. The speakers in this video feature Kevin Ottol, biology teacher and coordinator of outdoor environmental education, and eight of his students. The video shows how the students, faculty, and local community created 10,000 square, square feet of natural monarch butterfly habitat with over 75 species of native plants and trees in the middle of an urban area. Please play the video. Hi, I'm Kevin O'Toole. This is our story. May it inspire students around the world to restore and protect biodiversity in their communities. And now, here's Adrian. Hello, my name is Adrian Comas. Biodiversity. It's the most important element to the health of our planet and the survival of our species. In 2019, a United Nations report found that around 1 million animal and plant species are now threatened with extinction, many within decades, more than ever before in human history. And that transformative change at all levels of society is needed now to protect and restore nature. In other words, we are living in the midst of the Earth's sixth mass extinction. In Cicero, we don't just see the loss of biodiversity as a global problem, but a local one as well. We see it as an opportunity for the people of Cicero to come together to rally around a common cause. We can help protect the planet's biodiversity and connect with nature and each other while we do it. We all need to take initiative and we all need to understand that we are running out of time but I still have hope because my community gives me hope. We are just high school students, but we're already making a difference. Imagine the change we could make if we all collaborated. This global crisis requires all people of the world to unite. So to all my fellow students out there, we are the final hope. We are carrying a torch that we cannot afford to let burn out. My name is Lisbeth Delgado. The Morton Freshman Center, which is the high school that I attended, is surrounded by a bunch of factories. Those that live here know that Cicero is a community full of minorities that faces environmental injustice. This is when neighborhoods full of minorities are burdened with sources of environmental pollution that harm us and our environment. This issue is why we must continue to increase the green space and biodiversity of our communities. Mr. O'Toole and his students had already increased Cicero's biodiversity before I came to the Freshman Center by creating two gardens outside of our school. Had the pandemic not hit, Mr. O'Toole and my fellow classmates planned on planting dozens of trees outside of our school, not only to continue increasing our community's biodiversity, but also to create an impact in the climate change crisis. Before taking Mr. O'Toole's class, I hadn't put much thought into factories next to an area full of children, but I now realize the effect that their presence has and understand that we must do something to prevent further damage to our community and our environment. Buenos dias. My name is Anneli Jacobo. I never realized the connection between biodiversity and my cultural identity. My participation in the garden project and studying the monarch butterflies has opened my eyes to the idea that nature's preservation has very much to do with my ancestors and my roots. These butterflies are a bridge to both of my worlds because they migrate from Mexico and the U.S. for survival. Essentially, their purpose is to survive as a species. This cycle is seen with the human race as well, as we give life to future generations. When it comes to organisms, they all work together in a complex manner, creating a balanced and diverse ecosystem that keeps them from becoming extinct. Biodiversity is of the utmost importance because it brings needed balance to our world. Inexorably, future generations will suffer the consequences of the choices we make today. We must act by advocating and standing up to leaders locally and worldwide. It is essential to protect our loved ones by preserving the earth. I choose to do my part for mi familia y mi comunidad. 
Hello, my name is Nicole Davalos. Before coming to Morton, I wasn't really involved with nature, but once I started my freshman year and I started having classes outside and talking about topics such as biodiversity, I felt more involved in the world that I live in. We planted tons of native species and even some trees. Trees are so important to our communities because they provide us with fresh air and make us feel healthier. Typically, people like to take walks and jogs in parks and forests where there's a lot of trees. During the pandemic, my family and I enjoyed spending time away from technology and being in the fresh air among the trees. This generation is very dedicated to technology. If we could dedicate at least one hour of that time to connecting with nature and taking care of it, we would be a lot healthier. There's 24,000 public high schools in the United States. If we all did the same and planted a small garden or some trees, we could really improve our own health and the earth. Thank you. I walked into the Morton Freshman Center with no knowledge of the earth or my culture. When I walked out of the Morton Freshman Center, I had knowledge of the rapid decline in biodiversity around the world, the importance of my culture, and the aspiration to change the way we live. When I learned that monarch butterflies spend the winter in Mexico's oil mouth fur forests, I realized that protecting nature was international. If they don't protect the forests in Mexico and we don't plant milkweed and restore prairies in the U.S., then migration will go extinct. Culturally, these monarchs represent the souls who have died in central Mexico. Losing a species is more than just an ecological loss. It's a cultural one, too. After learning about the unprecedented loss of nature, one thing became clear to me. We all needed to take action. As we began working in those gardens, I realized that we were doing something to better the health of the planet we live in. We became obsessed with this topic of nature and biodiversity. We walked into class and became a part of something that was bigger than just our gardens. What we were doing would inspire the people around us to take action and restore our planet's biodiversity. We have no other option. Hello, my name is Renato Camas. I'm a student at Morton High School. The Garden Project has been a life-changing experience for me because it has helped me connect with nature. I now understand the importance of nature, especially in an urban setting. Cicero lacks green space, but the Garden Project has helped our community reconnect with nature. The garden symbolizes hope, especially for the monarch butterflies, which are an endangered species. Nature needs a helping hand from humans, but however, scientists agree that we're living in a mass extinction caused by human activity, like deforestation, as well as burning of fossil fuel that drive climate change. The Morris Freshman Center Gardens help nature. Nature is very resilient, but it needs to help to return to its former beauty. If more schools and communities do their part to help, we can preserve our world for generations to come. It only takes one seed to make a world of difference. Hello, my name is Daisy Delgado. Last summer, I decided to continue the biodiversity project that began at the Freshman Center. I planted milkweed and raised monarch butterflies with my sisters. But if it hadn't been for Mr. O'Toole's class in the gardens, that never would have happened. Seeing something as beautiful as a lively garden in a concrete city made me realize just how important it is to protect that beauty. The world has a lot of problems, but that doesn't give us an excuse to just stop and do nothing. If anything, knowing how much we need to do should be what drives us to act. Mr. O'Toole's class has been such an inspiration. I learned that despite my youth, I'm capable of making a difference, even if that difference is small. Because we live on Earth, a planet known for its abundance of life. Yet every day that life diminishes, with dozens of species going extinct each day. That's why our garden is so important. That's why protecting forests and wildlife matters. Thank you. And now, one last message from my current students. This spring, we are going to be planting over 25 trees. Join us and make 2021 the year of forest restoration to restore what we've lost and improve our well-being. Thank you very much. Great video. It's really when it comes to young generation and children, they are always source of inspiration, hope and energy for all of us. And also the source for taking action and showing determination for making a better future for all people around the world. 
Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I thank our distinguished speakers for their messages and presentation for sharing their insights on the importance of managing and restoring our forests. Together, they have taken us on a journey through forests in North America, Asia, and South America, and have highlighted how sustainably managing and restoring forests needs the concerted actions of all stakeholders. I now turn the meeting over to the Chair of the United Nations Forum on Forests, Her Excellency Ambassador Kitty Sweep, to moderate the third part of this meeting. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Hussein, uh, and thanks to the Secretariat too for presenting various leaders and activists uh, in action in forest and their communities. And indeed, it was especially inspiring to see young people contributing with enthusiasm to forest management. Uh, so dear friends, excellencies, distinguished delegates, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to chair this part of the meeting during which uh, delegations are invited to make statements in the general segment on the topic, restoring forests restores the health of people and planet. We have a number of inspired speakers. Uh, delegations are wishing to take the floor are invited to fill out a dedicated online speaker request form, which has been posted in the chat box by the Secretariat. Uh, I also want to remind you in order to give all delegations wishing to take the floor the opportunity to do so. And so I request that speakers keep their statements brief and succinct and to observe the time limit that was set for three minutes. Um, and having said this, uh, I would like now to give the floor to the first uh, delegate, the distinguished representative of France. And uh, he or she will be followed by the representative of Colombia. France, you have the floor. Merci, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Mesdames et Messieurs. The distinguished speakers have eloquently reminded us the importance of the International Day of Forests. And thank you, Madam Chair, to be here with us to preside over this event. The forests in general and tropical forests in particular are fundamentals in the preservation of climate and uh, conservation of the planet's terrestrial biodiversity. As the pandemic illustrates it, Forests are of importance for the welfare and good health of the world's population. The link between deforestation and the spread of zoonoses has been established even though forests in their tropical uh, dimension mostly are also an important resource in terms of pharmaceutical knowledge. As expressed in the preamble of the Charter of the Alliance for the Conservation of Brent Forests, which France supports actively, uh, quote, the world's forests are among our most precious common heritage, along with the air, water, and land out of which it thrives, they regulate climate and host most of the terrestrial biodiversity. The tropical forest and rainforest in particular is a source of wealth for forest countries and a shared responsibility for all. It is the livelihood of indigenous peoples and local communities living in and off forests. It is a treasure for humanity, which is bound to conserve it." End of quote. I invite our countries and the stakeholders to act accordingly. We are facing important opportunities in 2021. The international community must mobilize its political and financial capacities in order to do all to keep rainforests from reaching their tipping point or become net CO2 emitters, to reverse the rapid deterioration of the terrestrial bio biodiversity, and to act for the restoration, restoration excuse me, uh, where possible, uh, conservation and sustainable management of rainforests. We need a more common assessment of the situation among forest and donor countries on the objectives of transborder and international cooperation in a way to make the national determined contributions, especially those based on land use, land use change objectives to be more efficient. Allow me, 
a few words in French. L'Alliance pour la préservation des forêts tropicales et humides que le président Emmanuel Macron a appelé de ses voeux et que la France accompagne avec 19 autres partenaires, que je remercie, n'est pas une nouvelle organisation internationale. Elle est un forum politique de haut niveau dont l'objectif est de recenser les enjeux cruciaux tels que les chaînes de valeur durable, la préservation de la naturalité des forêts tropicales et l'implication des populations locales, puis sur ces sujets de rechercher plus de synergies au sein des mécanismes existants, notamment ceux financés par les banques publiques de développement pour fixer, dans le cadre d'une collaboration nord-sud vertueuse, des caps politiques clairs. Je vous invite à nous rejoindre. Please join us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you much, Mr. Guignard from France. And I now give the floor to the delegate of Colombia. You have the floor. Convening this uh, meeting on the occasion of this International Day. Conservation. Are you listening to me? We can hear you. Oh, Very well. Thank sorry. you. Conservation, sustainable management, and restoration of forests are critical to addressing climate change and biodiversity loss. Also, they are essential to ensure a green recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. As a country with 52% of its territory covered by forests, Colombia has set ambitious targets, which form the basis of an approach that places nature at the forefront of decision-making across all the sectors and levels of government. In 2019, my country reduced by 28% its rate of deforestation compared to the levels registered in 2017. The, our objective is to reach zero, zero net by 2030. In parallel, efforts on restoration had advanced a total of one 180 million trees will be planted by the end of the government's stand in August 2022. Dear colleagues, as an Amazon country, Colombia has spared no efforts in the protection and sustainable development of the biome. Under the Letizia Park, a strategic initiative for us, we have designed a protocol for forest fires in the Amazon. And more recently, just yesterday, we have launched the IDV Group's Amazon initiative that will mobilize public and private resources for in investing in bioeconomic in the region. We will keep enhancing our work for the region during the third summit of the Leticia Park to be held in September this year. We seek to ensure that such an important effort is coherent with initiatives of global scope like the Alliance for the Conservation of Rainforests, guided by the respect for the sovereignty of every member state, the Alliance strives for the conservation, restoration, and sustainable development. It is a high-level political effort that aims to make existing mechanisms more efficient Without replacing them, the Alliance is a coalition open to all the countries in the world and support an overall vision. Our aspirations do not stop there. Our commitment and ambitions go further. Colombia has also endorsed other initiatives such as the High Level Coalition for Nation and People and the Leaders Pledge for Nature they will be critical for the adoption of an effective global biodiversity framework post 2020 and allow us to tackle the challenges faced by forests. Madam, Madam Chair, to conclude, we recall the urgent need to catalyze transformative change to, to live in harmony with nature. Higher levels of international cooperation as well as renovated and innovative resources, mobilization strategies will be required. We need to advance 
toward the full implementation of the 2030 Agenda, particularly in the context of the decade of action and ecosystem restoration. Our purpose is to become a global and regional champion of the forest, one of the most vital ecosystems of our planet. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished delegate from Colombia for sharing uh, uh, the actions going on, especially in South America. Next, I give the floor to the distinguished delegate from Morocco. You have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, and happy International Forest Day. Today, we are not only celebrating forests, but we are having a moment to reflect on what is needed for restoring the forest health and their sustainable management in the context of recovering better from the global, global crisis of the COVID-19 pandemic, which was a real wake-up call for all of us. It goes without saying that healthy forests mean healthy humans and healthy planets. This is, this, this is an equation that should, not, that should make us do more, plan better policies, and mobilize further action on the ground for the forest health and restoration. We listened with a lot of interest to all the interveners today, and we thank them for the pertinent insights on the specific theme uh, of this meeting. It is my pleasure to share some insights and best practices of Morocco's action for the restoration and preservation of forests. Morocco has a rich forest ecosystem that is extended on over than 9 million hectares. With the objective of reversing the degradation trend and making the forest sector more compet competitive and modern, and under the leadership of His Majesty the King Mohammed VI, Morocco has adopted the new strategy, 2020-2023 Forests of Morocco, as a new development strategy for the agricultural sector in February, under the umbrella of the Green Generation 2020-2023. The Department of Water and Forest in Morocco is initiating the strategy by starting the plantation of 50,000 hectares per year and will reach 100,000 hectares per, per year by 2030. By 2030, Morocco's Department of Water and Forest aims to produce 460 million plants with 54 of its forest species nurseries with the collaboration of the private sector. Forest of Morocco 2020-2023 comes to develop Morocco's forest spaces and strengthen their productive capacities, preserve biodiversity, as well as create direct jobs and increase the annual income of ecotourism. Um, moreover, it's my pleasure to, uh, to, to highlight that the UN General Assembly adopted earlier this month and under the, under the initiative by the Kingdom of Morocco, the resolution that proclaimed the 10th of May an international day of the Argania tree, which is an ancestral tree of Morocco and intangible cultural heritage of humanity uh, as proclaimed by UNESCO. The Argania tree, a specific tree of the Kingdom of Morocco, will thus be celebrated every year on May 10th as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity and ancestral source for sustainable development. Before I conclude, Madam uh, Chair, I would like to highlight that Morocco is pleased to join the Al Alliance for the Conservation of Rainforests as an expression of commitment to join international efforts for the conservation, restoration, and sustainable management of the planet's rainforests. And we thank uh, France for the leadership um, in, for, for advancing the work uh, of this alliance. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, for, for uh, your leadership um, and happy International Forest Days again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miriam, uh, uh, for all the uh, information and also the leadership of Morocco in uh, sharing some of uh, the, 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 the of your culture on the Argon 2 and 3. Uh, next, uh, we will have the distinguished delegate of India. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving the floor. We thank the organizers for organizing the celebration of this important day. 
the health of forests on which we, we and all the species depend is deteriorating as highlighted by the state of the world's forest report 2020, that the net loss of forest area has decreased substantially since 1990. And the world is not on track to meet the target to increase forest area by 3% by 2030. If we continue to do so, we will erode the very foundation of our economies, livelihood, food security, health, and quality of life. The emergence of COVID-19 has underscored the fact that when we destroy biodiversity, we destroy the systems that support human life. Human actions, including deforestation, encroachment on wildlife habitat, and acceleration of climate change have upset the delicate balance of nature. We should not alter the system that has naturally protected us and as we will end up creating conditions that allow particular pathogens to spread. However, it is not too late. Nature can still be conserved, restored, and used sustainably. But we need to act now at every level from local to global. We need a whole of society approach with enhanced investments in green technology to sustainably use, conserve, and protect forests. India is ranked 10th in the world in terms of forest area. We have taken several steps to conserve and protect forests. In the course of the last decade, around 3 million hectares of forest and tree cover has been added, which have enhanced the combined forest and tree cover to 24.5% of the total geographic area of the country. Forests in India have been the source of traditional medicines and cures such as Ayurveda and homeopathy. Going forward, India aims to restore 26 million hectares of degraded and deforested land and achieve land degradation neutrality by 2030. The new draft forest policy of India aims to address contemporary issues such as of human wildlife conflict, forest fire, and climate change. India is also assisting fellow developing countries to develop land distortion strategies through cost-effective satellite and space technology. COVID-19 provides us an opportunity to rebuild a more environmentally responsible world. We need to better understand the web of life in which we live and appreciate that it functions as a whole of system. It is time to put nature at the heart of our decision making. Our efforts to conserve and protect ecosystems, such as forests, must be underpinned by scientific facts and collective action. The present generations have the responsibility to bequeath to future generations a planet that is not aversely damaged by human activity. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Malik. And also uh, thank you, India, for uh, ex expressing such strong ambition uh, in your national forest policies. Uh, next, we will have the distinguished delegate from the Republic of Korea. You have the floor. The delegate from Republic of Korea. Are you uh, available to speak? Otherwise, we will. Thank you, Chair. Great. For giving me the floor. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Hak Jin Kim, Deputy Director of the 15th World Forestry Congress, Republic of Korea, Forest. Forest Korea Forest Service. On behalf of Republic of Korea, representing Mr. An Byung-gi, National Focal Point of UNFPF, it is great honor for me to deliver a message to all of you. Today, we are here to celebrate the UN Day of Forest and raise awareness of importance of forest. We are all agree that forest restoration is a Pathway to green recovery and better future. Or, as you are aware, the Korea Forest Service will host the 15th World Forestry Congress in 2022 in collaboration with FAO. With the theme of building a green, healthy, and resilient future with forests and six sub themes, we will place for the global forestry community and society to share their knowledge and experience and to discuss how to achieve a sustainable future for all in the post-COVID-19 era. Korea is ready to share our rich experience and regarding forest restoration, food security, forest education, 
public health and other relevant issues. During the week of UNFPA 16, we organized a side event to provide detailed information on preparation of WFC and to gain input from all participants. I would like to request for all your attention to the WFC and your participant participation. For those who have any further question on the Congress, I will put the official email address of WFC Secretariat on the chat box. Please kindly find it and send any question to it, the email. Thank you very much. Thank you much, uh, Delegate from Korea, and for also for reminding us uh, of this important upcoming uh, event of the World First Thanks. Congress. Uh, the next uh, delegate on my list is uh, the distinguished delegate from China. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, happy International Day of Forests. Forests are very important in protecting ecology and promoting sustainable development. The carbon storage and the emission reduction function of forests are vital to address climate change and achieve carbon neutrality. Continuous extension of forest area, enhancement of forest quality, protection of forest carbon are effective means to maintain the health of the earth. The Chinese government attached great, great importance to forest restoration. In 1981, China launched the nationwide compulsory tree planting campaign and designated March 12th as the National Day planting, Tree Planting Day. All Chinese citizens from the state leaders to the general public are obliged to plant the tree. Over the past four decades, China has implemented many ecological restoration programs, such as the Three North Shared Bed Program, the program on, combating, on converting cultivated land with severe soil erosion into forests, the program on desertification control in, this, in the vicinity of Beijing and Tianjin. In recent years, China has incorporated the concept of ecological civilization and the lucid waters and the national mountain are invaluable assets into our endeavors to forest restoration. With all these remitting efforts, China has witnessed remarkable achievements in the forest development. The forest cover has increased from 18.21% in 2007 to 23.04% in 2020. And the forest stock has exceeded 17.5 billion cubic meters. The forest carbon sink has also been raised up gradually. The urban and rural living conditions has been remarkably improved. Is a forest just greatly contributed to the improvement of ecological environment of China and the rest of the world. So achieving the global forest goals, China has proactively promoted pilots for UNFI implementation in certain provinces to explore and share the best practices of sustainable forest management. In 2020, China announced its goal to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060 and pledged to increase its forest stock by 6 billion cubic meters by 2030 compared to the 2005 level as an important component of China's NDCs. Enhancing forest carbon sink is vital for China to address climate change. To this end, we will continue to give priority to the protection of forest and forest restoration. Ladies and gentlemen, let's join hands to further promote forest restoration and make contributions to the health of mankind and the earth. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you much, China, and congratulations on uh accomplishing such great achievements. 
Um, next, uh, we have the delegate from Brazil, who I give the floor. Thank you. Madam Chair, this year, we unfortunately celebrate the International Day of Forests in the midst of an ongoing pandemic whose full impacts in our societies and economies are not entirely clear. Much has been said about how the recovery efforts are a window of opportunity for countries to accelerate their sustainable development and contribute to our common goals. Brazil believes that any discussion about a sustainable post-COVID recovery must include the value of forests, of its ecosystem services, and of the jobs and knowledges that rely on it. One way through which Brazil has been pursuing this is by creating a market for the payment of ecosystem services. With the approval earlier this year of a new legal framework, the Brazilian government is working to expand recognition for individual and collective initiatives that favor the maintenance, recovery, or improvement of ecosystem services. The new legislation establishes guidelines for the payment of monetary and non-monetary retributions for activities that contribute to the protection of native vegetation. Examples of these activities are the prevention and control of forest fires, support to biodiversity research, soil conservation, use of agroforestry systems, restoration of native vegetation, among others. By regulating and foresting and fostering the market of ecosystem services and supporting best practices, we, ex we expect to strengthen the engagement of the private sector and international partners in mobilizing the much needed new and additional resources for our forests and the people who live in it. More than 20 million people live in the Brazilian Amazon. Some live in big cities like Manaus and Belém, with more than 2 million people each. Some live in far-flung communities, only reachable by days-long boat trips. This is the region with the lowest human development index in Brazil and the hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Bringing sustainable development to this population is a constant challenge. More investments are needed to promote technologies and business models that can take advantage of the local biodiversity in a sustainable way. The Brazilian government has been promoting a modern bioeconomy in the region while reinforcing command and control policies through more surveillance, inspection, and enforcement of applicable legislation. Preliminary results for the second half of 2020 indicate that deforestation rates in the Brazilian Amazon fell by 19% compared to the same period in 2019. The number of forest fires on the first two months of 2021 was 30% less than on the same period in 2020. Enforcing the law and promoting the sustainable development of the people who live and depend on the forest must go hand in hand. For forests to be part of the solution in our recovery efforts, these two tracks must be, must be taken into account. Thank you. Thank you much, uh, Delegate from Brazil, and also for highlighting especially the plight of the peoples living in the Amazonian rainforest. Uh, next on the list will be the distinguished delegate from Indonesia. You have the floor. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Let me start by thanking you for convening this wonderful commemoration uh, and the panelists for the insightful presentation. Allow me to take this opportunity 
opportunity to reiterate our commitment to continue our sustainable forest management path, balancing between conservation and economic uh, development. Let me highlight some of our achievements and discussion points for our event today. First, forest conservation for the people. Indonesia has accelerated its conservation efforts in the last decade. We have successfully decreased deforestation from 1.09 million hectares in 2014 to 0.1 million hectares in 2020, while slashing our forest fire by 80%. This is despite the limitation presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. One of, our, one of the contributing factors to this success is the excellent collaboration of the government with the local community, including in, in tackling forest fires through a community fire awareness program called Masyarakat Peduli Api. Through our social forestry program, our conservation efforts aims to ensure local communities can reap the benefits of the forest. Second point is the restoration, is, is, uh, restoration means resilience. Uh, we continue to enhance the co-benefits of forests and land, and land restoration with climate change mitigation and adaptation and disaster reduction, particularly in supporting the recovery effort and building our national resilience. One of the translations of this notion is through the effort in rehabilitating peatlands and mangroves, uh, wetlands that are known to have huge uh, carbon sequestering capacity. Also to meet development and climate objectives through science-based and multifaceted international response on peatlands, Indonesia established the International Tropical Peatland Center or ITPC. Rehabilitating peatland is not only to restore their function, but they can also benefit the local communities, such as in the Riau province. The local government in collaboration with uh, PT Pertamina Refinery Unit 2 has restored 14.5 hectares of burned peatland. The restoration has generated around $1,700 per hectare per community through the growth of uh, pineapples. Last point is the, is the constructive approach and collaboration is essential. The government of Indonesia has always been uh, open to cooperate and collaborate with various development, development partners and stakeholders in the forest sector. Indonesia partnership with the EU through, through the FLECTI VPA is one of the example of constructive collaboration. It has proven uh, to combat illegal logging while increasing the access of our timber products to the European market. It is our wish that this positive footstep can be replicated in the future uh, cooperation among others to support the strengthening of Indonesia's sustainable commodities. In closing, Indonesia looks forward to strengthening collaboration with all partners and stakeholders in realizing, realizing our various uh, forest-related targets of the 2030 agenda in this decade of action. Happy International Forest Day. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Koba from Indonesia. Um, and uh, also, uh, I was especially uh, piqued by uh, your sharing the information on how for instance, mangrove uh, solutions uh, is an example of how uh, the cheaper approaches can sometimes uh, gain a lot of uh, uh, benefits as well. Thank you so much. And next we go to the delegate from Chile. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have some trouble with my video. Um, so the Chilean delegation celebrates the International Day of the Forest and welcomes the outstanding presentation of our distinguished speakers on the enormous value of the forest for the human existence and the human well-being and welfare. Chile has one quarter of its national area covered by forest and one fifth covered by the National System for Wildlife Protected Area by the state. So, forests in Chile provide 100,000 million cubic meters of oxygen. That is much more than the Chilean population needs to breathe. Also, forest growth in Chile provide 600 cubic kilometers of the rainfall and 42 million cubic meters of water that come from directly from photosynthesis process. 
In addition, Earth in Chile removed from the atmosphere 100 million tons of carbon dioxide for mitigation of climate change and climate regulation. Therefore, forests are vital for human existence and human welfare of the Chilean population. For these reasons, the world deserves a legally binding agreement on forests to restore forests for the generations to come. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alfaro, uh, for sharing uh, your experiences from your country, Chile. The next uh, delegate will be uh, given the floor, who is uh, the delegate from the United Kingdom. You have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Good morning to all colleagues. I have to say it's an absolute pleasure. It really is to be here to mark International Day of Forests with, with everyone this morning. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to start, I think, by echoing a number of our other speakers this morning by saying that, of course, as countries begin to recover from the wide-reaching impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, the evidence is clear. It's absolutely clear. We cannot continue to destroy nature. We must put nature at the heart of our response to build back better, to create greener, healthier, and more resilient economies. Now, for our part, the UK is committed to reducing deforestation and biodiversity loss. At home, we have committed to protecting 30% of our land and sea by 2030. This includes providing almost $900 million through the Nature for Climate Fund to protect, restore, and expand habitats like woodlands and peat bogs. But we've also taken action to clean up our supply chain, which, which our supply chains. Our new due diligence legislation will require large businesses to ensure that the commodities they use have been produced legally. This will help ensure that the everyday products that we buy as consumers are not driving deforestation and causing unnecessary harm to wildlife and people. And through our international climate finance, we are putting communities at the heart of forest protection and restoration efforts. In Madagascar and Indonesia, our Blue Forest Project is supporting communities in preserving and restoring over 180,000 hectares of mangrove forests, which you yourself, Madam Chair, has just talked about, through sustainable fisheries management. And in Brazil, we are supporting small and medium-scale farmers to restore deforested and degraded land and take up sustainable farming practices. But we know we must do more, and we must all do more. As hosts of COP26 with our partners in Italy, the UK will drive international commitment and ambition to nature through the Leaders' Pledge for Nature, the 30 by 30 campaign, and to build on our successful Germany, Norway, and UK partnership pledge that has already successfully, successfully delivered $5 billion worth of forest activities by 2020. And as we enter the UN decade of ecosystem restoration, we want to build a global alliance of countries committed to making the protection and restorations of forests a global priority as well as increased action to restore deforested or degraded land, we want to see a greater protection for existing intact forests, which store vast amounts of carbon and often overlap with indigenous territories and communal lands. But to do this, we will need to scale up private and public finance. The UK Prime Minister recently committed $3 billion to protect and restore nature and biodiversity over the next five years but we want to see more donors, governments, businesses, civil society, and indigenous groups working together to create successful partnerships for nature. This could mean piloting innovative models for nature-based solutions or testing new markets for financing forests, as well as integrating nature into new and existing funding commitments. We need to explore all of these options. But more importantly, the UK government wants to bring consumer and producer countries together to address the market drivers of deforestation and to demonstrate that people, economies and global trade will only benefit from putting nature and forests first. The UK is committed to making 2021 a year for climate and biodiversity action in which we all build back better together and continue to raise ambition ahead of what I hope that will be a very successful COP26 later this year. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Woodruff. And uh, we thank uh, the UK and your government, of course, for uh, the tremendous high level of uh, international cooperation that you exhibit. And of course, we wish you success in your leading uh, this year's uh, climate conference, COP26. Thank you, thank you much.
Uh, next on the list is the distinguished delegate from Guatemala. You have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. It's a great pleasure to see you. And thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, in a few words at the beginning, we want to say that more forests implies more life. And that is important to take that into account, particularly this day in this special commemoration. I want to thank also each one of the distinguished panelists for their presentations. For Guatemala, it is an honor to address you during this commemoration of this 2021 International Day of Forests. And on behalf of the government of Guatemala, we would like to thank you for your leadership, Ambassador. Guatemala means a land of many trees in the Mayan language, Nahuatl. It is a mega diverse country, rich of culture, wildlife, and ancestral tradition. That is why it is in our essence to promote a forest protection and its restoration. Nevertheless, uh, we are concerned that forests are facing some serious threats. As you have mentioned, forest loss has serious environmental and economic consequences. In particular, the loss of livelihoods, water scarcity, loss of biodiversity, and increased global warming. The recent COVID-19 pandemic has also shown the serious repercussions that pandemics caused by infectious diseases can have worldwide and particularly in developing countries. In recent years, the world has also witnessed wildfires of unprecedented magnitude. Despite our efforts between the past two years, more than 1,000 forest fires were registered nationwide, which have consumed almost 3,000 hectares of forest. We urge the international community to assist with equipment and tools for preventing and fighting forest fires. And we are particularly uh, thank you for the support that we have received. For Guatemala, it is paramount to reach a balance between the conservation of forests and their biodiversity and the use of resources to improve the livelihoods of local communities and indigenous populations who currently depend on them. We have a potential to develop more projects, but financial support is urgent to address the needs and to implement national initiatives and support local actions that definitely have benefits at the global level. With a firm conviction of the importance of forest protection, our country is implementing its national strategy for the restoration of the forest landscape. And we certainly think that, that for this period, 2015 to 2045, the implementation of this will help a lot for the restoration of the forests. We have said that the goal to restore in a sustainable way 1.2 million degraded hectares by the year 2014, also including the articulation of policy with actors and instruments through capacity building. For concluding, uh, Madam, uh, Madam President, in this regard, we believe that it's important to continue fostering actions as the strengthening of incentive schemes for the conservation of forests and the protection and surveillance of protected areas. We are particularly thankful to Brazil and Canada for their cooperation in the prevention of forest fires as well as in the sanitation in areas affected by pests. Guatemala calls for global proposals that are aimed to providing support that contribute to achieving the restoration goals set by the countries nationally and globally. Let's celebrate this day, aiming for an ambitious international action to support the protection of forests. Forests are the lungs of our planet. Let's protect them and give them our breath that depends on them. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Omar, um, and, and also for articulating um, the many challenges uh, for countries like yours uh, and indeed the, the need, the absolute need for action and co international cooperation. And uh, may that indeed uh, uh, lead to, to the fact that Guatemala, the land of many trees, may remain as such. Thank you, uh, Omar. Uh, next, I have on my list, uh, we stay in uh, the delegates from Latin America, the delegate from El Salvador. You have the floor. Thank you so much, my dear um, sister, Ambassador Kitty. Indeed, we stay in the Central American region now with El Salvador's statement. Well, my country joins the celebration of the International Day of Forest. Almost 38% of our national territory is covered by forest having a high degree of diversity in our ecosystems. However, we are in one of the most vulnerable regions to climate change, and we're also facing challenges posed by desertification and drought that are asking us to act urgently. 
We recognize that the population most affected and vulnerable to these effects are children, youth, and women. This leads us to work at the national level to reduce, minimize, and adapt to climate change and to preserve our forest areas. Our strategies focus on conserving critical ecosystems and key natural landscapes and promoting sustainable tourism and economic development, among other initiatives. We also address aspects related to the management, conservation, and sustainable use of forests with important instruments, such as the Forest Law, the Forest Policy 2011-2030, and the Forest Strategy that contemplate and develop programs for the promotion and sustainable forest management that also focuses on rural development in areas of ecological fragility. In addition, uh, we are part of regional initiatives such as the Action Plan for the Decade of Ecosystem Restoration, which aims to reverse the current effects of degradation in the context of the United Nations Decade for Ecosystem Restoration 2021-2030. El Salvador would like to highlight the importance of having a respectful relationship with nature, which implies, among other elements, repositioning the forestry sector within the framework of national economy. The challenges are diverse. We must increase forest cover and improve forest conservation by demonstrating that they make direct contributions to food security and household health, mainly to the poorest families especially now that we are in time of shortage and natural disasters. It is worth highlighting that families in rural areas continue using firewood to prepare food, to meet family needs, and also to use these resources as an income source. Therefore, a special focus should be given to the situation of rural communities. Moreover, the involvement and participation of the private and multiple relevant actor sectors is key to forest investment we cannot continue working alone. Finally, I would like to mention how crucial is financing and access to green funds for all countries, especially for low and middle income countries, as well as promoting the broadest possible cooperation for the conservation of our forests. Madam Chair and dear friends, saving forest is saving our future. I thank you. Thank you much, uh, Griselda, Ambassador from El Salvador. Uh, I was particularly uh, glad that you mentioned uh, briefly the issue of decertification that is often uh, been left out, but uh, the time to pay attention to that uh, whole issue is indeed now, before it starts, before it is too late. And indeed, the finances are crucial uh, in, in that aspect as well. So thank you. Uh, next is the distinguished delegate from Guyana. Thank you, Madam Chair, Ambassador Kitty Sweep, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. The government of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana is pleased to join you all in the observance of the International Day of Forest under the theme Forest Restoration, a Path to Recovery and Well-Being. Indeed, it is not just about the trees, but the entire biological diversity, which creates the delicate balance needed for our survival on planet Earth. Guyana's position on the sustainable use and preservation of forests is well documented and consistent. We take pride in the fact that almost 80% of our country is forested and almost intact, with 8.4% being protected areas. While our national efforts are fortified, I must lament the alarming rate of global deforestation, which has slowed somewhat, but continues to be unacceptable. Among all the other benefits, forest is one of the few remaining natural combatants against the climate emergency. We need more forests, not less. Over the years, we have sought through our national efforts to contribute to global efforts in the sustainable use and preservation of forests in tangible ways. In 1996, our government, in partnership with the Commonwealth Secretariat, established the Iwakrama International Center for Rainforest Conservation and Development, dedicating 1 million acres of forest, or 1.6% of our land mass, 
to test the concept of a truly sustainable forest where conservation, environmental balance, and economic use can be mutually reinforcing. The results of this work will serve to guide policy both nationally and internationally. The government of Guyana also commissioned a low carbon development strategy, which aims to transform Guyana's economy onto a low carbon sustainable development trajectory while simultaneously combating climate change. At the center of the strategy is the preservation and sustainable use of our forests. We believe that pavement, payment for climate services provided by the forest can go far away in achieving the sustainable development goals. Excellencies, before I end my short intervention, let me also recognize the role of indigenous peoples have played and continue to play in the sustainable management of forests, even as they depend on it for their livelihoods, food security and health, among other things. As stewards of the forests, they are the frontline protectors of it, and we can learn a lot from them if we choose to listen. The laws and policies we put in place have a direct impact on their lives, and we must always seek to safeguard their well being, even as we do the same for everyone else. In Guyana, 14% of our country is owned and controlled by indigenous peoples. I mean, 14% of our landmass but their protection of our forests extends beyond that boundary, boundary. And for that, we are extremely grateful. Let us commit today, Excellencies colleagues, to redouble our efforts to halt the first forestation and to forest restoration. I thank you. Thank you much, uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Carol, Carolyn uh, from Guyana. Uh, and thank you especially for highlighting uh, the, the important role that indigenous peoples play, not only as the, re the, the receivers of benefits, but really as a repository of the, the invaluable information on how we actually need to go about uh, taking care of our forest. Thank you so much. Uh, the last uh, uh, delegate from uh, countries that I have on my list is Russian, de uh, the delegate from Russian Federation. You have the floor. Thank you very much. I would be very brief. I uh, salute this intention to mark this International Day of Forests. We welcome this initiative and we thank the organizers. Uh, we would also, of course, as a, uh, as a country which is almost one fifth of the forest uh, the territory of the world, would of course uh, uh, join all the uh, rightful thesis, uh, all the rightful points that was made today, uh, which which was made today, and uh, uh, support this work. I would like to uh, concentrate on two uh, brief points. One, that we as delegates to the UN should uh, prioritize the support of the UN structure dealing with forest, and I mean the Secretariat. Uh, and I mean, uh, I mean, DESA secretariat, because there are some discrepancies of whether we have to reduce it, optimize this structure or what to do. So I think we should agree and highlight the idea that we as member states should support the structure of the UN secretariat uh, to deal with this important issue. Second point is that um, we have to increase the role of forests in the climate change, uh, uh, fighting the climate change. Uh, this is very important and we need to uh, keep this in mind. Uh, this is a priority for our uh, delegation, for our country. Of course, our country is making a lot of efforts to increase the area of protected forests. It's our treasure. Uh, but this is uh, something that uh, is easily available in, in the websites, all the information is there. Thank you very much and uh, uh, congratulations with this important date today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Dimitri, um, also for highlighting uh, that, that important role that the Secretariat plays. Uh, and it is indeed upon our, ourselves, the, the member states of the United Nations, uh, when we uh, increase and expand our agenda and the things that we want to do, 
we must also make sure that the Secretariat as the continuing uh, support for us uh, indeed can grow uh, with that ambitious agenda. So thank you so much also for your leadership uh, internationally. Uh, now we uh, go to the, uh, the next uh, segment of speakers, our uh, valuable uh, partners. Um, and first, we will have from intergovernmental organizations, the Asian Forest Cooperation Organization. Distinguished delegate, you have the floor. Uh, greetings from Seoul, South Korea. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. On behalf of the Asian Forest Cooperation Organization Secretariat and its member parties, we would like to congratulate the United Nations Forum on Forests for organizing this event, the celebration of the International Day of Forests under the global theme, Forest Restoration, a Path to Recovery and Wellbeing. Asian forests, which covers 549 million hectares and account for 14% of the global forest cover, play vital roles in providing a variety of services that billions of people depend upon for their livelihood and subsistence. Tropical forests of Southeast Asia play important roles in biodiversity conservation, provision of ecosystem services, and maintaining global carbon balance. However, the Asian region experienced continuous forest loss at a rate of 8 million hectares per year between 2005 and 2015, but significantly registered the highest net gain in forest area in the 2010-2020 Forest Resources Assessment but without proactive measures to put in place sustainable forest management practices, forests in Asia are at risk of reduced capacity for climate mitigation, limited provision of ecosystem services, loss of biodiversity, and reduced economic growth potential. The Asian Forest Cooperation Organization, or APOCO, as a formal regional body, shall continue to serve as a bridge to enhance cross-sectoral cooperation and broaden coordination among our member countries, partner institutions, and organizations on the management of forests for the sustainable production of goods, ecosystem services, biodiversity conservation, and climate change mitigation. And in doing so, a focus shall continue to provide a platform for the exchange of expertise and technical cooperation in areas of forest restoration and rehabilitation through the implementation of focus landmark programs and regional projects in our member countries. We will strengthen forestry institutions and enhance forest governance through our capacity development programs for forest policy makers, technical forestry practitioners, and researchers in the field of forestry to help contribute to the sustainable management of forests to address climate change and societal challenges. Contribute to poverty reduction and improve the resiliency of upland and forest dependent communities through our investments in sustainable and economically viable livelihood projects in member parties. Promote private sector participation and investments in forest resources management through our fund mobilization and partnership programs. We're expanding our partnership in restoring Asian drylands and drought prone areas in Southeast Asia, South Asia. East Asia and Central Asia through our Landscape Partnership Asia in partnership with C4 ECRAF and Global Evergreening Alliance. Raise a level of awareness of the public and private sector, including youth, through the intensive information sharing and educational programs. With the COVID-19 global pandemic that has affected the global economy and billions of people all over the world, this is an opportune time to ensure that forests will be an integral part of global discussions and decisions for the world to recover from this pandemic and build back better in achieving the sustainable development goals. Again, congratulations to UNFEP for this successful event under the new normal and good morning from Seoul, South Korea. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Calderon, uh, for joining us and, and sharing uh, uh, the work that you do in your region. Uh, uh, the next organization that I have on my list is the delegate from um, the INBAR, the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization. Uh, 
you have the floor. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to make this statement on behalf of the International Bamboo and Rapper Organization, IMBA. IMBA is an intergovernment organization with headquarters in Beijing of China. It has 47 member states, mainly from the global south. It has a permanent observer status at the UN General Assembly and the three real conventions. Bamboo and Rapper are integral to the forest culture, livelihoods, of over a billion people worldwide. They are both versatile plants with thousand uses and applications. Bamboo is a giant woody grass and also one of the fast growing species. It can be effectively used to restore forests, decorated landscape, landscapes, and ecosystems. Water is a spiny plant to a less, lesser extent. It is commercially exported to produce high quality furniture and household goods. Currently, water is also used as an artificial bone in plants for humans approved by the UN, by the EU medical regulators. EBAS programs and the projects in the past two decades demonstrate that the trample bottom line benefits can be possible with bamboo and rotten. Bamboo and rotten subsector provides millions of green jobs and also brought rural people out of the poverty. I'm glad to announce that INBA is also a partner for the own ecosystem restorations journey efforts with ENEP, FAO, and other international organizations to bring back ecosystems and restore both agriculture and the forest landscapes. In this regard, it is important to mention that INBA's member states have committed to restore 5.7 million hectares of equilibrium lands with bamboo by 2030 as a contribution to the bond challenge. I can assure that we will continue working tirelessly to support our member states to make this commitment. Madam Chair, I would like to reiterate that the bamboo environment has enormous potential to contribute forest restoration, improve the health, and the well-being of the people and planet. INBA reaffirmed its commitment to contribute to achievements of UNF goals and our wish 2021 ce celebration of the International Day of First event a great success. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Liu. I'm uh, really uh, happy that you're uh, joining us today to highlight and remind us of the uh, really uh, great qualities of bamboo. Uh, it's fast growing. It has such a high uh, COT, COT2 uh, possibility, potential for intake. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, next, we turn to the uh, two major groups who will be the last on our list today. Uh, first, we have the delegate uh, representing children and youth. You have the floor. Dear Madam Chair and dear colleagues, um, 2020 should have been the super year for nature. And instead, the COVID-19 pandemic emerged and changed the world in ways that we are currently not fully able to see and comprehend. As humans, we are very good in thinking of such developments as exceptional, as extraordinary, as a once in a lifetime happening. However, IPES has shown us that between 540 and 850,000 potential viruses exist in nature that could affect humans. What we experience is the ordinary. Nevertheless, the pandemic allowed us to change the discourse on ecosystem protection and restoration. More members of our societies are now aware that the health of ecosystems is related to our own health. We're not disconnected from our environment. We are a product of it. Land use change, agricultural expansion, and urbanization that leads in most instances to deforestation and forest degradation cause more than 30% of emerging disease events. In order to achieve the SDGs, we need to substantially change our behavior towards the non-human world. Our first priority must be to halt deforestation and forest degradation. Our second priority must be to implement sustainable forest management practices, allowing communities to benefit and live off their environments. Our third priority must be to restore and destroy and degraded forest ecosystems. 
Major group children and youth to the UNFF strongly supports the UN decade on ecosystem restoration and this, this year's IDF theme. We urge member states, international and non-governmental organizations to promote and implement just forest restoration activities. But what can just mean when we talk about forest restoration? To us, justice has three dimensions that are all connected to each other. The foundation of just restoration must be the equal political representation of all members of our societies when it comes to the design and implementation of forest restoration activities. Secondly, just restoration demands cultural recognition, and this implies taking seriously and finding strategies to incorporate different worldviews, ideas, approaches, and concerns of all members of our societies related to forest restoration. Thirdly, just restoration should aim for the equal distribution of social, ecological, and economic benefits that stem from forest restoration activities. Forest ecosystem restoration has the potential to make worldviews visible, stimulate active participation, and create more equal societies. Young people are growing up in this world with a substantially greater awareness of the destruction that happened and happens to the world in comparison to many generations before us. We, th we see the strong necessity for more socially, economically, and ecologically just futures, and are motivated to contribute productively to them. For this reason, we urge everyone to see us, hear us, and include us better in order to improve our joint fight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Frederick, uh, for joining us uh, indeed so early in your lives. Uh, joining the discussion, uh, the voice of youth and children is important and must indeed be heard. Thank you much. Uh, next, we have the very last speaker on uh, my list for this segment, which will be the delegate representing workers and trade unions. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, Excellencies and distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you uh, for uh, you and, of course, the organization for joining, uh, for the opportunity to join you in the celebration of the International Forest Day. I salute and acknowledge all the previous speakers and contributions, emphasizing that active management, restoration, and arbitration as a pathway to recovery and well being. As a focal point, for the major group workers and trade unions and global director for the Building and Woodworkers International, I will try to give a voice to the 13 million workers in the forest. Noting, of course, that there are many, many more informal workers as well. They are the ones that through their activities maintain the forest that are so beneficial for all. Um, in my background, you see a planted forest that is managed and owned by the Uganda Trade Union. They could not do that on their own. They got sponsored by the Dutch Trade Union FNV. It's just a small example of what labor can contribute to the importance of reforestation. As it happens, I was yesterday attending the World Youth Committee of the Building and Woodworkers International. And all young representatives reported job losses, reduction in wages, reduction in working time, reduction and losses of apprenticeships. As it seems that our sectors have been more averted than others. If we as a global forest community celebrating today the International Day of Forest want that forest restoration and building back better are really contributing to well-being and recovery, we, but especially you as representative of the member states, must implement this in full compliance with the ILO standards, protocol, and recommendations, so that we can achieve not only the reafforestation deal uh, goals, but also the decent work agenda. The pandemic, uh, dear chair, has not only exposed the widening and deepening gap between the has and has not, 
It also exposed the existential crisis with the exploitation and abuse of the most vulnerable people, the workers in the rural economy. We'll all have to do better and we can do better. I would like you, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you so much, Kun, um, uh, not only for joining us, but uh, in, indeed um, you represent the actual uh, persons uh, who will execute, who will have to execute the actions that we talk about and that we call for. So your, your message is, is very important also because as we've been seeing from the uh, initial assessment of the impact of uh, the pandemic, uh, the workers especially have been hard hit. So success in that. And uh, with that, uh, I have to close this segment. I thank once again all uh, delegations for your thoughtful uh, insights and uh, your rich uh, experiences that you shared with us um, on our topic, Restoring Forests Restores the Health of People and Planet. And now I turn over to, I think it's uh, Hossein uh, to take over. Thank you much. And thank you all. Can't do it. Uh, thank you, Excellency. It's actually Afsa. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, greetings to all. Um, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I now invite the meeting to view two films that were finalists in the 2021. World Wildlife Day Film Festival, which was organized by the Secretariat of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, CITES, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and Jackson Wild. The film showcase was part of the 2021 World Wildlife Day celebrations held earlier this month on 3rd March and helped illustrate the World Wild Day theme. For, which was forests and livelihood, sustaining people and the planet. The film is titled Reforestation a lot and was produced by If Not Us Then Who, which is set in Peru and tells the story of a community in the Amazon which came together to fight illegal deforestation and restore the forest that had been destroyed by illegal loggers and cocoa growers. Kindly play the video, thank you. A la fecha ha habido alguna alerta posterior a nuestra visita? Ya no, ya no, no ha habido más. No había, no, no había más nada ya. Esas talas de madera también que hubo ya paralizó. Mi nombre es Pablo García Cahuasa, soy secretario y como segundo apoyo de la comunidad. El primer paso del, es el monitoreo. Ahora estamos al segundo paso ya este, creciendo. Listo, señores. Conformado nuestro comité. Usted tiene que ponerse de acuerdo. ¿Cuál de esos territorios que está acá, en este bosque, de dónde a dónde es que usted van a proteger? De margen, ¿cuál es lo que ustedes van a, a conservar? Gracias a ese bosque que nosotros, la comunidad que vamos a cuidar, 
vamos a tener este, un beneficio económico y con ese beneficio económico vamos a sembrar. Todos están queriendo, están poniendo de su parte. Querer recuperar las cosas, pues, de lo que ya muchos años se ha perdido. Desde su banco de ustedes pueden reforestar, ¿ya? ¿Han entendido? Pueden reforestar. ¿Qué vas a sembrar, hermano? Castaña. Pienso sembrar cedro y castaña. Tornillo y cedro. La caoba y, y la castaña. Allá bajamos el pisco yambo. Tengo dos hectáreas de cacao. Y pienso sembrar cedro y cacao. Cedro y cacao. Cedro y cacao. Esto es lo que está en rojo. Es lo que no encontramos acá. Podemos traer de otro lugar. La finalidad de poder encontrarnos aquí en esta oportunidad en la comunidad nativa de Buen Jardín, de Callarú, es por el propósito de traer 500 plantones para la venta del bosque de, de esta hermosa comunidad de Buen Jardín. Con cuidado, con cuidado. Las semillas de lo que no, si ustedes no tienen, nosotros vamos a llevar allá para que ustedes también se irán, si siempre, mejor este. Claro. Capirona, capirona. Es de mandarina. Yo estoy este, colocando toda la etiqueta al arbolito que es el centro para el sembrío del señor Hammer. Lo que no quiere ahí, 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 entonces, en una reunión entre nosotros, nos hemos puesto de acuerdo en empezar en personas que tienen mayor necesidad que otras. ¡No, va por otro lado! Yo, yo, Humber, Pisco, llamo. yo tengo cinco hijos, aparte que, que tengo, tengo seis centenas. Para mantener a mis hijos tengo que trabajar, rebuscarme ¿ya? en otras partes, porque si no rebusco, ¿qué me va a dar? La comida, las bendiciones que ahorita estamos plantando, los cítricos, para poder ya vender a otra parte. Con eso vamos a poder a mantener ellos, hacer estudiar a otra parte. Algo que, que siempre nos une a todos nosotros es las mingas. Hacer unas mingas en una cantidad de familias que son muchas. Trabajar es, es muy rápida, es muy excelente. Ellos son para medir 6 por 6. 6 por 6 es la. Siempre se hacía, pero ya con el tiempo ya nos hemos este, dejando. Pero hoy en día pues nos toca nuevamente trabajar así, unidos, para que todos tengamos las cosas que queremos. Ya, el, las plantas están sembradas. Ahí viene el tema del monitoreo a las plantas, mediante el satélite, ¿no? Vamos a tomar foto a la plantita para ver la coordenada y la altura. Es importante evidenciar para que el mundo y todos los financieros vean que nosotros estamos haciendo, no solamente deforestar, también estamos reforestando que hay varias comunidades que también están en esa, misma, en esa misma mira, y entonces yo creo que con esta iniciativa vamos a hacer una réplica en las demás comunidades. Lo más increíble ha sido que la gente desconfiaba, ¿no? Pero lo que me gustaba es que se volvieron a unir. Al ver el día de ayer que se volvieron a unir, que trabajamos en grupo, es algo bonito.
Thank you. Our second film is entitled Our Planet, How to Restore Our Forests, and was produced by Silverback Films, Net Net Netflix, and WWF UK. In this eight-minute film narrated by Sir David Attenborough, we learn about how after centuries of clearing forests, we can still ensure a future with more forests than any of us have ever known. What's more, it will make us all healthier and happier. Kindly play the video. Thank you. Most of us have a special memory with trees, a childhood climb, or their shade on a sunny day. But we've taken trees for granted and cleared nearly half of our planet's forests. Luckily, forests have an extraordinary ability to recover. Across much of the globe lies a forest in the making. Just the slightest opportunity and trees reveal their magical ability to restore themselves and rewild the land seemingly from nothing. This resilience stems from a need to survive and recover from the harshest conditions nature can throw at them. But forests have struggled to bounce back from us. Nothing takes down trees faster than humans. We're devastatingly efficient. In just 25 years, we've lost over 1 million square kilometers of forest. We're still clearing over 10 billion trees a year. Many of our ancient forests are gone, where the variety of life was most abundant and diverse. We've also lost the forest's guardians, the predators, who help ensure that plant eaters can't prevent the forest's return. But we need trees. Forests absorb carbon from our atmosphere and store it in their trunks, roots, and the soil. They remove almost 15 billion tons of carbon dioxide each year. As we clear and burn forests, we release dangerous amounts of carbon back into the atmosphere, increasing the rate of climate change. We need to reverse this and create a world of expanding forests once more. Luckily for us, the solution to how we restore the planet's forests is simple. We just need to give trees the opportunity to draw on their natural resilience. We can start by protecting those last remaining ancient forests. These precious places, undamaged by humans, still host their entire natural mix of species and trees, young and old. From here, Plants and animals can radiate out to colonize new ground. These ancient places need to remain standing forever. Most of the other forests on our planet have experienced some human impact. Yet they can still be healthy and wild. We can keep them this way whilst carefully extracting wood and other products and valuing them as they are. By managing them well, we can work with their natural resilience to keep them standing. It's a fact that our growing global population will need to use more wood. And that could be a good thing. 
wood is an extraordinary renewable resource, and taking it from well-managed sources benefits forests and the planet. But on their own, natural forests can't provide all the wood that we need. So we also have to farm trees, just like we do other crops, and create a new generation of plantations. Plantations that allow wildlife to pass through natural forest corridors, that benefit local communities and economies, and that are planted on existing cleared land so they don't replace natural forests. Around the world, there are an estimated 2 billion hectares of degraded land where forests could be restored. That's twice the size of Europe. As we become more efficient farmers and adopt healthier diets, we'll free up land for plantations and for our forests to return, to rewild. Better farming, more forests. We can help nature to accelerate this global restoration. In many countries, people are planting millions of trees by hand. There are projects that deploy extraordinary technology to speed up the natural process even shooting seeds to rewild those hard-to-reach places. If we do all these things, just imagine our planet in the future. We'll have protected our amazing ancient forests. We'll be able to harvest all the timber we'll ever need. We'll have stabilized our climate and we'll have more natural forests than any of us have ever known. The best thing of all, we can build a future where our cities will be filled with trees, giving us shade and cleaning the air. This will make us all healthier and happier. Because just seeing trees from a window or walking past trees on our way to work restores our minds and bodies. That's the magic of trees. And when you're in a forest, you can feel it. Go on, breathe. On that happy note, um, we come to the conclusion of this uh, Forest Film Showcase for this meeting. I now give the floor to the officer in charge of the UN Forum on Forest Secretariat, Mr. Alexander Trepakov, to make his, clo his closing remarks and conclude the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Afsa. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. We have now come to the end of today's event. On behalf of UNDESA, I wish to thank all our speakers for their insightful and inspiring statements, emphasizing the value of forests for the health of our planet and for a better future for current and future generations. We have benefited from a wide range of perspectives from government officials, United Nations entities, forest industry, trade unions, and nonprofit and community organizations, and from children and youth who represent the future of our society. A common thread of all the interventions we have heard is that sustainable management of the world's forests is not just a lofty aspiration, 
but it is an urgent necessity. As this virtual meeting draws to closing, I would like to share a few thoughts and action points that transpire from our discussions today. First, we have heard that conservation, restoration, and sustainable management of forests can help to offset many of the social, economic, and environmental impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. As we build our path to recovery for all, it is critical that we integrate forest-based solutions into our recovery strategies, stimulus packages, and action plans. Second, healthy forests provide us countless benefits, but they also need our help. Deforestation and forest degradation are still taking place at alarming rates. The impacts of climate change are worsening, and the current pandemic is only exacerbating threats to natural ecosystems, including forests. We must prioritize strengthening the resilience of forests through our renewed commitment to the internationally agreed forest-related goals and targets. Third, the role of forests in protecting biodiversity, regulating climate change, and eradicating poverty is undeniable. Well-managed forests provide essential products and services that support health and livelihoods, especially in times of crisis, and serve as a safety net for most vulnerable communities. Four, we know that healthy, resilient forests are key to decreasing the risk of future pandemics. Scientific research has shown that zoonotic diseases usually occur when natural land, uh, landscapes, such as forests, are cleared. It is in our best interest to plant trees, reduce forest loss, and rebuild buffer zones to reduce the risk of future disease outbreaks. Fifth, there have been resounding calls for a green recovery from COVID-19, but that can only happen if we increase investment in sustainable management of natural resources, including forests. It's not enough to, to just maintain pre-pandemic levels of funding for natural resources. We need to increase these levels if we want to strengthen environmental regulations and governance. Sixth, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development provides a comprehensive framework to guide recovery efforts for all in the short term and to transform our development pathway for longer term sustainability. To strengthen our health systems, improve livelihoods, and foster economic growth, we need to build back better, and healthy forests must be part of the equation. Seventh, the United Nations Forum on Forests is uniquely positioned to address all issues related to the sustainable management of all types of forests. The UN Strategic Plan for Forests 2030, which is fully aligned with the 2030 Agenda, provides an agreed set of goals we must meet and targets we must achieve. This is our roadmap to recovery and well-being. Dear colleagues and friends, the current once in a century pandemic has opened the once in a lifetime opportunity to shift our development paradigm to greater sustainability, greener economies, and more inclusive societies. It has upended our lives, and yet we have shown that we are capable of rising to the challenge. On this occasion, let us renew our commitment to living in harmony with nature so that every day 
gives us cause to celebrate. Thank you once again for joining us through all the various virtual platforms, WebEx, UNTV, and across social media. Happy International Day of Forums and have a good weekend. This meeting is adjourned.